Good afternoon, Roger Hill of Weathering Heights. Incoming snowfall, um, a quick look at uh, some of the histories right now. Over here we can see a, a lot of different reports here and there's a, quite a few reports of uh, somewhere between six and eight inches of snow that's fallen in parts of the Ohio River Valley. Uh, this particular part of the storm here is going to be headed our way into Vermont. And uh, right now it looks like the leading edge has been kind of flirting with just a little bit of snow down at the Berkshires and some of that has scooted uh, due east into uh, portions of southern New England. This is going to be spreading our way up into uh, the state of Vermont here a little bit later on, and we'll look at that. Here's some of the uh, histories here of a uh, very cold area of higher pressure, and um, the winds, are, the gradient winds are starting to increase just a little bit out of the east here with an area of low pressure. This is going to be tracking along uh, southern Long Island coast and out to sea, intensifying as it does and into the Gulf of Maine, and uh, we're going to see some good Atlantic moisture overthrown in interior sections of New England setting us up for a very, very fluffy snowfall. Here's a quick look at the temperature scheme. Uh, uh, to the south, you might notice temperatures basically in the 30s, and uh, nothing to worry about here, although that 32-degree uh, uh, isotherm is going to be roughly in the vicinity of New York City, just a little bit north and roughly in the vicinity of Boston. These areas are probably going to experience rain with temperatures above 32. It's going to stay cold, and we're starting out real cold obviously with temperatures in the single digits here across par parts of Vermont. And with snow moving in a loft, uh, illustrated by radar there, everything is pretty much right on track. You can see some of the temperatures here uh, just uh, climbing out of zero degrees earlier today. We're only about one degree above at the Map State Airport. Uh, temperatures around five above in parts of the Champlain Valley. But we're going to see temperatures uh, on the increase very gradually through the night and into the day tomorrow probably topping out somewhere around the uh, either upper teens, maybe some lower 20s. Pretty classic scheme here when we have uh, an area of higher pressure with an oncoming storm. You get the high cirrus clouds that have a tendency to be thin spots and gives you a little thin sunshine from, from time to time, sort of filtered through uh, those high thickening cirrostratus layer. And uh, this is a quick uh, look at what we've been seeing through the morning hours. And uh, these uh, higher clouds are going to be thickening and lowering as we get toward the evening hours. Here's some of the higher resolution computer modeling, the uh, HRRR. And uh, this is a really good model to see when the incoming precipitation, the relative humidity, 80, 50 millibars, uh, shows up. And um, what you notice here is, uh, let me stop it here, and um, you'll be able to see uh, roughly this is about 15Z. That was about uh, 10 o'clock this morning. And at about uh, 17Z, that's, uh, let's see, that'd be noontime. We're starting to see the lower clouds begin to uh, make it into parts of southern Vermont. Of course, these clouds are going to be headed off to the north and east. And as they advance, it usually is a good indicator as to where you'll start seeing the flurry activity begin. That's roughly about 4 o'clock, just getting into Washington County, uh, 4 o'clock right there. And then 5 o'clock, uh, headed for the northeast kingdom, probably not arriving until sometime around, uh, looks like 7 to 8 o'clock. And this is a precipitation uh, type, uh, shows you a pretty solid uh, arrival time here for precipitation shield. And some of the higher resolutions, the HRRR is pretty good at this, not all the time, but uh, pretty decent. And you can see the just roughly right about 21Z, that's uh, 4 o'clock this afternoon, it looks like there'll probably be some Virga aloft, maybe perhaps a few flakes trying to make it into the region by around 4 or 5 o'clock it looks like. But it's where that darker blue color is, right in this vicinity, that's where you're going to see um, the steadier snow began, and again, this is about 8 o'clock now, so, or 7 o'clock now, and this will be headed, uh, of course, north and east, overspreading the, the state from southwest to northeast. This is the accumulated snowfall, always very helpful, and it's pretty good uh, average, and it does show you the start times here. Again, uh, this is about uh, uh, 3 o'clock this afternoon, getting into, uh, looks like, almost entering southern parts of Rutland County, southern parts of Windsor County, already snowing uh, for parts of Bennington, Windham County. Of course, this spreads north. The arrival time for Washington County to start see some snow, start to reach the ground, and start to accumulate, probably not until around 8 o'clock tonight. And, of course, that makes it up to the Canadian border. Now, um, down here, you can see some of the snowfall totals. Notice the areas around Pennsylvania, New York City, back into southern New England. They're picking up some pretty good amounts. We're talking probably four to eight inches, and that's what's going to be spreading northward. And you can see that transition headed northbound with uh, the heavier snowfall moving into the southern part of the state here. 
And a quick look at the 850 millibar wind fields aloft, uh, roughly about 4,000 feet. This is where the winds start to increase as uh, in the low to mid layers of the atmosphere, uh, a pretty good uh, vector of wind is going to be moving in, it looks like from the south-southeast, and it looks like the uh, winds could uh, uh, sus probably surpass 50 miles an hour, uh, 50 knots actually, as they just barely get into it, looks like Bennington and Windham counties. These winds probably mix with snow, should not be a problem for utilities down in the southern part of uh, the state, but something we're going to have to monitor just in case those stronger winds aloft get down closer to the surface. Roger Hill of Weathering Heights Consulting.